Hello, friends. My name is Tina from Quantum Healing with Tina and Karen. I'm a Beyond Quantum Healing practitioner, spirit releasement therapist, and intuitive empath. Um, I just wanted to pop on today and answer a question um, that someone has had recently. And the question was, so we know that Dolores Cannon talked about how Earth is a school and we choose to come here into these physical lives. Um, we plan, plan our lives, we choose our parents, uh, you know, all of those ideas. We choose specific things that we want to happen in our lives in order to learn and understand and grow from. There's also this idea of karma, you know, this cause and effect. So say you were a murderer in one life, you would come back as someone who was murdered in the next life to understand what that experience is like. That's an extreme example, but you get my point. Um, I don't believe that anymore. I do not believe that Earth is a school and we're here to learn and uh, we learn through our suffering. I think that's that idea that we learn from suffering is what is keeping us stuck here. I now see this world in a very different way. I see it as a, a reincarnation trap so that these arconic entities can feed off of our light. They feed off of our trauma, our suffering, all of our low vibrational emotions. They keep us stuck and trapped in these places. Um, I love, absolutely adore Dolores Cannon. Um, I think she did amazing work in opening the doorway, opening the pathway for the exploration of consciousness in the way that she did so that people like me could be doing this work today. I absolutely adore Dolores. I think she was amazing. But there are a lot of things that she didn't take into account. And one of those is entities. She denied 100% that there were such thing as entities. Now, when we're talking about <clears throat> entities, dark force entities, arconic gods, whatever you want to call them, these beings that are low vibrational, that are not connected to the one true source because they've chosen, chosen that separation. Um, the thing about them is they're not going to show up with horns and a pitchfork. They're going to come dressed as a beautiful angel of light. Satan comes dressed as a beautiful angel of light. This is how they deceive us. This is what we need to understand. They're not going to show up as a big, ugly monster. They're going to show you a beautiful angel of light. The archons can put on whatever face they want. They can choose whatever appearance they want. That is what Jesus said in the secret gospel of John. The archons can choose any face. So although he was created as a serpent with the head of a lion, he can choose any face that he wants. So when we are presented with what we think are light beings, they may not be actual light beings at all. And I was reminded of one of um, a session I had, I think it's been like a couple of years ago now, um, maybe not that long, but it was a while ago. And my client was, I guided her back to the point where she was planning this life because I, at the time I still had the belief that we chose this, right? Like we meet with our light councils and we choose all these different things we want to have in our life. And so I wanted to know why she chose so much trauma to the point where 
there was extreme abuse and neglect in the home. There were entity, entities involved. You know, the mother was extremely mentally ill. The sister was also mentally ill and an open portal for entities to come through that would try to kill my client. I mean, these things are real. They, they're real, they happen. And so I wanted to know what would, what would make her choose this as a, as a life path? Who would want this? So, you know, when you grow up in an abusive um, environment like that, you go on to attract more and more and more abuse throughout your life. So this beautiful being of light ended up um, in the sex industry and then as a slave, and then eventually um, got out of that and into another abusive relationship. But this one came disguised as a beautiful angel of light, right? That's what narcissists do. That the, that's what these entities do. They're going to mirror to you everything that you thought you ever wanted and needed. They're mirroring you. So they're telling you all the things that you want to hear. They're love bombing you. They're um, future faking about how amazing your life is going to be. And you think that this Prince Charming just came out of the blue to save your life. Meanwhile, it's the same exact entity with a different face this time. And this is how deceptive and tricky they are. So when we had our session, the very first session, she was the most connected client I ever had. She went straight in during the imagination exercises. And she firstly was seeing an entity, like a, it actually looked something like you would think Satan would look like with the, like red horns and stuff. Um, and this entity was speaking and saying that he owned her and he would say, she is mine. So I explained to him the idea of free will and we burned that contract and he uh, vanished with it. Um, and then we went on, as I said, to the point where she was choosing to choosing quote unquote to come in here and we met with a council of these nine light beings and immediately she says this doesn't feel right this doesn't feel right these are false light beings this is before she even knew what a false light being was she didn't even know what a false light being was she just knew that that didn't feel right to her and so they also, cause I'm like, okay, let's ask them questions. Let's ask them why you chose this for your life. And you know, all the questions we asked. And she's like, they just yelled at me to get out. I'm like, whoa, that's pretty crazy. So at that point, I really didn't know what to do um, besides leave that scene. So we left that scene and we moved on. Um, but my intuition was screaming to me that these were, and this is before I even really knew uh, about false light beings and how they worked. My intuition was screaming to me that these were false light beings who signed her up for this life so that they could feed off of her suffering. And looking back through my notes on that today, I was just like, whoa, whoa. It's like my guides brought that into my awareness again so that I could um, solidify that, that knowing that this is really what's happening here. And I really do dislike being the bearer of bad news. <laughs> it's really not my favorite thing to do. Um, Humanity is a very spiritually immature race. Why? Because our memories are wiped every time. So we have 
no memories of all the other things we've ever done in our thousands and millions of lives. That's why we're spiritually immature because they keep us trapped in this loop life after life after life while they're feeding from our suffering, creating this suffering for us and then feeding from that. So when these beings show up as, you know, they can show up as your own higher self in a session or uh, a guide or whatever it is, um, we have to be careful and use our discernment. This is how a lot of very subtle deception comes through um, QHHT or BQH sessions. It's through these, the lack of discernment of who am I talking to? You know, who am I really talking to? This is why it's important to have a clearing before you have a hypnosis session so that we can clear any attachments that might be there. Someone in a group commented that she had never seen a lives between lives um, part of, the, of a session that every time she went to the other side, she just went back into another life. She was like, why is this happening? And everybody has all these different reasons for why it could be. Maybe she didn't need to rest in between lives. Maybe she just wanted to go into another life. But I don't feel that at all. I feel that the archonic gods that rule this world were not allowing her to rest. So there's that. <laughs> um, and I've seen that come through in other people's sessions as well. Um, Rising Phoenix Aurora has a couple of sessions like that in her books where the reptilians were recycling souls. And in a recent session of ours, we saw that um, actually it was the same client. Her son was being abducted by reptiles and he didn't choose this life. He was actually being, his soul was actually being held captive by the reptiles. So there's a lot of entrenchment here on this earth plane. I do not believe that we really have any free will until at least we become clear and sovereign within ourselves. But even then, there's always some kind of influence, whether it's, you know, from technology infringements or outside entities or, you know, the voice of God that's coming in. There are targeted individuals who are just tortured um, constantly, you know? So all of these different things play into our free will. Even the drugs that we ingest into our body, everything, everything. So we are like a, a Petri dish of all of these different consciousnesses. If you have attachments, you know, you might, you might have earthbound souls attached to you or dark force entities or reptilians, negative ETs, um, parasites, bacteria, fungi, all of these different consciousness could be living within your system. And then, you know, so there's more than just the conscious mind and the subconscious mind that comes into play when we're doing hypnosis sessions. We have to be able to ask the questions to know who we're speaking with. We have to know who we're speaking with in sessions. And we can't be intimidated by energies that call themselves source or Archangel Michael, or even a higher self. We can't be intimidated by those energies because if they are legitimate, they will welcome our questioning. They will welcome our discernment. So I just wanted to make this a quick video today, something to think about. 
Um, I do not believe any longer that we need to learn through suffering and physicality. I believe that we need to change that belief within ourselves so that we can graduate from this system and achieve eternal rest in the real world. I want to go back to the real world and I want to bring you the truth on how to get there too, because I know you're tired of suffering. I know you're tired of suffering. We all are. And so with that said, that also brings me to another line of thread of consciousness here. And that is, is it possible for this earth, the way it is now in the system, the way it is now, the fallen system, is it possible to reverse that? I don't know. This is where I'm at right now. I don't know. It would take billions of people to wake up. Billions. And as of right now, I don't see that happening. So what I see coming is a lot more chaos. And we need to be prepared for it. And the way we get prepared for that is to heal the trauma that we're holding on to. We need to heal. And an amazing way to do that is through hypnosis sessions and RSR sessions. So if any of you need help out there, please do reach out to us. I mean, they really are such a powerful combination of having the remote spirit release done in combination with the BQH session. It's like... 10 years of therapy or 20 or 30 all wrapped up into one. That's what people have said about it. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for today. I just wanted to um, talk a little bit about this idea that earth is a school and we came here to learn. Um, like I said, I absolutely love Dolores. Um, and I do think you know, when we're first waking up, that idea can be really helpful for us. It was helpful for me. I'll speak personally. That idea that we chose all this, like all the suffering that I've been through in my life, which has been a lot, that I chose that, that allowed me to take responsibility for it, to take responsibility for my life and no longer be a victim of this world. So in that way, it's, it can be useful. It's a useful, like a tool. And it's a truth for a short time until we grow out of that truth and it's no longer true. And we're moving on to the next stage and evolution of consciousness. And I see actually see this stream of consciousness, the same things that are coming through for me are coming through for others. So it's like the the portal is opening wider and allowing more light to come in, more consciousness to come in to humans right now, which is good because if we don't know that we're trapped, how do we get out? If we don't even know we're trapped, right? So knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. And knowledge is how we get out of here. The more we learn about this world and how it works. And, you know, I understand a lot of people don't want to talk about these darker subjects that just want to exist in a world where everything is perfect and there's rainbows and butterflies and no darkness. I get it. I used to be you. <laughs> I used to be you. But my higher self was not allowing me to live in that world anymore with the shades down. My higher self brought me a root awakening in my first Beyond Quantum Healing session. Um, it wasn't a Beyond Quantum Healing session. It was actually an Aura session with Rising Phoenix Aurora um, where I saw myself in a matrix pod being monitored by grays. So that was like my wake up call. And when asked why um, I needed to see that, my higher self said so, because she needs to understand the darkness and how it works in this world. 
If we don't know what we're up against, how can we ever break free? We have to know what we're up against. And, you know, I get it. Like people just want this to be over with. They just want this big solar flash to hope it uh, to happen and to ascend to 5D or to go to another planet. These are all deceptions. They're all distractions to have us not focusing on what's important. And that's healing ourselves, raising our vibration so that when we do die and leave this body, that we'll have enough strength to get back home to the real world. This is what we need to understand. And I really don't know if as of right now, like how to tell you how to do it. I do know that you need to raise your frequency. And at this point in time, I believe that just having that knowing will allow us not to get sucked back into the trap and return to the true one, the real world and eternal rest. So I hope that's helpful in some way. Um, I would love to hear from you in the comments. If you have any comments or questions, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help us out. Um, you know, it would be really easy for me, for us, Karen and I, to come on here and, and channel messages and tell everybody what they want to hear that would be really easy to do and to gain a huge following really fast. But that's not what we're here for. We're here to bring you our authenticity and our truth and the knowledge that comes to us, through us, through our clients that are attracted to us and help you put this puzzle, put the puzzle pieces together as we're putting the puzzle pieces together and to bring you what is authentic and what would be helpful for your evolution. Not to just sugarcoat everything and give you false hope. That's not how we work. I, I can't do that, I'm sorry, I can't do that. What I just saw now was um, they want me to tell you about Ashtar and that Ashtar is not a good guy. He actually has a very, um, reptilian feel to him if he's not actually reptilian there's definitely a reptilian consciousness there they definitely want me to share that to make that clear um because ashtar will use women who have a an emotional um attraction to him um or even men uh, use them as channels to bring through information, um, always with, you know, 98% truth and 2% lies. So this is how they emotionally manipulate us all the time, all the time. Pretty much everything you see out there is some kind of manipulation. So guard your energy stay protected, stay sovereign, be careful who and what you're listening to. And when you are listening to messages you're not so sure about, have the intention to protect yourself from that frequency. And, you know, I'm not accepting any frequencies from this video and these beings, whoever it is channeling through, because there's so much deception out there. Okay. I love you guys. And We'll talk soon. Hope you have a great week. Bye.